Good evening. This is Edward, September 25th, 2020. We can hear the sound of rain and thunder in the foreground. We can be anticipating days of an outpouring because they're on upon us. So this evening, we're going to talk about resurrection, since that's what we're contending for. And we're on a drive to see happen. As many of you know, we are in the season of the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, A week ago, I believe Friday, was the sounding of the shofar. And uh, we've been in the Ten Days of Repentance, which ends on Tuesday with the Day of Atonement, the 4th of October. Uh, And that is followed by the feast itself. Actually, it's not the 4th of October. I'm I'm mistaken. That's the 30th of September. Uh, And then we're followed by the 2nd of October, which is Friday. And that is the actual beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles. 29th is Tuesday. Oh, my wife has corrected me. The 29th is Tuesday. So, we're looking for some great things. And uh, what better time than the Feast of Tabernacles? So many promises have been spoken about this feast. And as we have said over the years, both the Feast of Passover and the Feast of Pentecost have seen a fulfillment on the natural plane. But the Feast of Tabernacles in its uh, depth has not because it speaks of resurrection life. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit as we sit around the table here and talk about resurrection life. First of all, let's start by defining resurrection life. This was something that was conveyed to us many years ago by Uh, a very close mentor of ours. Quote, Resurrection life will be an existence in a world that is invisible, yet very much maneuvering and living in a world that is visible, but not vulnerable in it. And, And that's really very important because during this time, We have been very vulnerable in the warfare. Uh, We're in a window of time. We've known this for some time. But we're in a window of time that will be marked by this breakthrough into resurrection life. This is the door that we stand before. And the word has been coming. Keep speaking the word. Keep speaking the judgment because it's flowing and we're seeing the world progressively implode. And there's no doubt about that. Day to day we've seen developments happening in countries far and near. Things we've never seen before but an implosion of the world system as we're seeing it happen now. And all of this is really because of one paramount truth God is beginning to bring the sons to birth, and the sons are in the process of birthing the kingdom. It's interesting because for 40 years, the word has come that judgment will precede the release that God has for the sons. Lord, we draw your anointing this evening. We're looking for a fresh baptism of understanding of what you're doing and the timeliness of what we are seeking in the change of our bodies. But it's important that we we, we do understand that judgment precedes the releases. God judges the vipers that have hung on to you 
you throw them in the fire and you're able to rise up. That's why we've talked about bonds and I'll continue to talk about bonds as often as the Spirit leads because that's what's sucking your life. That is what's deterring your breakthroughs, your ability to see and the manifestation of resurrection life in and through you. The limitations and the roadblocks that we have had are being removed because the sons have been faithful to give themselves to the work of the cross and the deep purging fire of his presence. It's time to see the work that God has been doing in the sons completed. The promise is that he will perfect you unto the day of Christ, spirit, soul, and body. We're in the process of being perfected, and we know that. And so, what is the completion of this work? Well, what is the sign or seal of our sonship? And we know that that seal from the Father is our breakthrough into resurrection life, the resurrected body. This is where we are, and this is where we've been. This is the final seal of sonship. This is the last leg of the race. We're holding the baton tight, and we can see the end goal. Many have run and fallen to the side. Many have given up. But we're here, God. We're here, Lord. Baton in hand. We have not forgotten thy word. We have not let it go. And that's really all that the Lord's really required, and yet it's been a far greater thing to accomplish than anyone has understood. You say, okay, yeah, I'm not going to let go of the word. But the trials and the fire and everything that each son has had to go through has tested your mettle. People that had been in churches led by false shepherds, without being specific, could say, well, I've walked this way for 25 years and, you know, I was taken advantage of, led on by false shepherds. And the answer, the best answer to you is to bow down and say, thank you, Lord, for the path. I'm not a victim here. I am a victor. And this path you have ordered before me. And yes, Lord, by your grace I've been able to drink that cup. But unfortunately, many people don't have that viewpoint. They're bitter and uh, unforgiving and unable to let go. And consequently, the Lord is unable to meet them. It's interesting, one of the words that came about six years ago from the Lord, and I've been pondering on it in the night hours, and he said, you will barely be able to remember what it was like to have known life under the restraints and limitations that you have lived under once resurrection life fully completes. And I remember having been translated into a realm of freedom, which I've spoken of from time to time. The freedom was so totally immersed in freedom. I don't know how to d d explain it. And within that realm of freedom it was very difficult to remember the days of oppression and warfare that I had come out of, that we as a people have come through and come out of. But that is the word. It says you'll barely be able to remember 
what it was like to have known life under the restraints and limitations that you have lived. We've all known that this is coming, that resurrection life is going to happen here at some point. Perhaps we didn't realize that we were the ones that God sent on point to bring this release that has been destined for so very, very long. We've all known all along that the ascension of the sons goes hand in hand with the redemption of the physical body, and with this comes a release of judgment so catastrophic on the face of the earth and in the realm of spirit that it's hard to even fathom. And here again, I'll, since we're just sitting having a, a family time here, we'll share a few more things. The Lord said, not too, not too long ago, the battle is coming. It will be here sooner than you think. And it will be far greater than you can imagine. And to me, that's not anything to be fearful of or concerned about. If anything else, more excited. Lord, bring it on. You've trained our fingers for war and our hands for battle. And you go before us. Lord, we're ready to enter into the destiny that you have for each one of your sons. The word has always been, as we said, the judgment against the spirit realm, against the hordes of evil, and that which is fed off the life of the sons will happen in concert or in a similar timeline to the breakthrough of resurrection life. With judgment comes resurrection. With resurrection comes judgment. Is it the horse before the cart, the cart before the horse, the egg and the chicken? I don't know. But they come so close and hand in hand. Now more than ever, this is what we need to be focusing on. Resurrection life. I know it can be very difficult to do that when you have the buzzards biting on your heels. Like Anne's father had once said, when you're up to your ass in alligators, it can be very hard to remember that your original mission was to drain the swamp. <laughs> I don't know if I quoted it exactly right. You got it. Oh, she says I got it. I mean, that's not just a, a cute saying. <laughs> this has been your life. This has been my life. We're on a mission here. God says, drain the swamp. And, you know, we're, we're taking the kingdom. We're birthing the kingdom. We're beginning to subject kingdoms back unto the Lord. But it's difficult because there's alligators biting at your rear end all day long. And that's been the life. <laughs> That has been the life. It's important that we keep our focus on the goal and not upon the day-to-day -day skirmishes that we all have. As I was telling my daughter recently, so many of these skirmishes and bits of warfare that, that you experience can really be reduced down to really one thing, bonds and contacts. Bonds and contacts. They're slimy. They're hard to put your finger on at times. They come in the back door. They come in through the back window and the upstairs floor. Who knows how? That's really where the warfare is that each of us go through. It's transference, in other words. And transference works through bonds and contacts. And that's why we have to stay diligent because our adversary, the devil, does what? He prowls like a roaring lion seeking to destroy. So if we were to put legs to that, you can say, well, yeah, he's prowling. Okay, well, what does that mean? And 
seeking to destroy. Well, I got that one. But really, in English, he looks to work through every contact, bond, weakness, Achilles heel point that he can to get in and oppress and, 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 and restrain the manifesting of the sons of God. And this is what the sons are living in. This isn't coming. This has been how it has been. Over the last several years, the word has come in the spirit that we're so close, so close to the breakthrough. And that it's right here, right here in front of us. And yet we can feel, Lord, well, I I believe that, I accept that. But in other ways, it can feel like it's a million miles away. But that is only an illusion. The time is here for change, a change that literally brings forth a new creation. We're not looking for an extended life or even a long life. We're not looking for the ability to live 900 years. Like Methuselah, we're looking for a change within our physical body that will bring forth resurrection life. And we don't know exactly the full experience of what this is to be. But we do know that changes are happening within us, even right now, moment by moment. As we said before, it's, it, it's, it's very difficult when you're in the midst to really see the minute details of what you're experiencing and going through and understand what it is in proper perspective. It's like when you're in the midst of the trees, it's hard to see the forest. Um, or when you're in the midst of the tree, whatever, the, you know what I'm saying. We can get so close that we, it's hard to, to really see and grasp what, what's happening. It's hard in real time to look at what you're going through on a day-by-day basis and take it out of the context of all these skirmishes and little battles that are going on or distractions and understand, okay, what really is going on here? Is it this battle, this contact, this bond, this relationship? Is it this over here, that over there? I tell you, it's not easy to to do, to separate it down and say, wait a second, it's none of these. It's none of these. It's the warfare and the battle for resurrection life and the breakthrough of the kingdom and what God has raised the sons up for and sent them into the earth for. That's what's happening. That's the proper perspective. Oh, but you don't know what kind of day I had. I do. It's probably the same kind of day I had, only different circumstances. The time is here for change. A change that literally brings forth a new creation a new creation. It would be very interesting to live in the time of the disciples, although actually some of you probably have, and to experience what they went through when they waited before God in the upper room. They they had been told to wait there for the promise, and they didn't know what that promise was going to be. They had no idea, really. I mean, there were certain things alluded to, but they had no idea. But they waited before the Lord. And in a similar fashion, the overshadowing of the Father is beginning to unfold within the sons, and it's only going to increase. I don't know if you've noticed the uptick of the presence of God in your life, but it's definitely changing. Things are changing, and, um, and it's only going to increase in many ways. This is another way to voice it. You could say, well, I'm, I'm sensing the presence of the Lord more uh, in my waiting upon him in my intercession or when I'm driving down the street. Um, but another way to look at it would be that we're experiencing an overshadowing 
of the Father over the sons as he brings them to birth. The promise is that the very same power that was focused from the Father upon the Lord that transformed him is the very same energy that is being focused upon us right now. Why would Paul say that if it wasn't true? Why would he say that if there wasn't a breakthrough coming? So, like everything, let's just back up and, and, and look at some of these scriptures a little bit differently. Um, because we've read the scriptures so many times, we get locked into a way of seeing something, and we read it and we say, even if we don't realize what's happening, subconsciously our mind is like, yeah, I, I, I've read that 35 times, I, I got it, I understand. But to dump all of that, dump our conditioning, dump our, our preconceived ideas, and just kind of let the Holy Spirit show us another way to look at something that's happening to us from a different perspective. So right now, it's like when the Holy Spirit overshadowed um, Mary. I, I, I think that's how it went. Right. I think that's the word, overshadow. Yes. And so what happened out of that was, you know, the, the, she became pregnant and, of course, gave birth to Christ. Well, the Father is overshadowing the sons right now. And maybe we just need to look at it differently. Just do a little change in our paradigm. Uh, just a, a different way of looking at what we're experiencing, what we're going through, all the daily skirmishes, our access to the Father, and everything. Just to take a look at it differently. Rather than buying the lie that says, well, I can't please Him, I'm not doing enough, I, I know He's probably not happy with what I'm doing, um, I need to be doing more, and so you're constantly judging yourself. And the enemy is, of course, working with you to help you undermine yourself. And, and, and stop, throw all that off, and say, I may not be aware of it yet, but I know this is happening because I feel it. There's something within me down deep very deep. In fact, it's just very deep. And I sense this. I sense the presence of God. And I sense His overshadowing of me. And there's something changing within me at a very deep, deep level that I'm, 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 I'm barely aware of. But the Father is overshadowing the sons. He is so involved with you right now, so involved with Anne and I, and he is overshadowing. And, it, 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 and it, he's in the process of, of birthing the sons. And we, don't, we haven't really seen it, maybe from that perspective, of how close the Father is to us right now how deeply involved he is with us because we have that aspect in our mind that struggles with our awareness because of all the distractions, all the skirmishes, all the things we have going on in the periphery. They just they pull your focus and awareness away from the Father and you're just kind of contemplating all these other things. And it escapes us how deeply involved and connected we are in what the Father is doing in us right now. It's no different, uh, well, probably it's a little bit different, but it's very similar to what the Lord Jesus Christ experienced in his relationship with the Father. And then when he went up to Mount of Transfiguration and the Father appeared, Something similar is happening. Something is happening that we're, we haven't understood yet. We haven't put the pieces together. And as such, we've kind of held things off in either a future tense or 
it just held it in abeyance rather than stopping and and just changing our thinking it's like it's like changing your thinking from having lack to having abundance we say i don't have this i don't have this i'm lacking this and this and you get rid of that mindset and you have a mindset of abundance and how much you do have and there's something of the presence of the father that has already been committed to the sons that we're not aware of yet. We're coming into that awareness, but we don't quite have it. But the more that it comes clear to us, the more it cha- it, we grasp it, the more it's going to change our positioning and our relationship with the Father. Because you're going to begin to realize that he is ever present with you. And I know the the word talks about that. You know, lo, I will be with you until the ends of the ages. But we're talking about the experience of that. It's one thing to just to kind of quote scripture. And yes, this is true. And, and But I mean to live it and experience it is something entirely different. Where you know that. You know that commitment of his presence. And it changes everything for you. It changes how you react to situations, how you move, what you say, because you realize, and we've talked about this in recent words, it's it's Joshua all over again. And the captain stands before Joshua and says, Joshua, remove your sandals. For the place you're standing is holy. And we've talked about this. We brought words on this. This is just another way of looking at that. Because we need to realize the truth of that word. When he comes to the sons, remove your sandals. For the place you're standing is holy. And not only that, wherever the sole of your feet shall trod, I have given it to you. And not only that, Where you go, I go. You are my extension. I have given myself to you. That is the commitment of the Father to the sons. That is our present reality. But we haven't, it it hasn't really taken hold on a deep enough level yet. We're kind of getting it mentally and a little bit otherwise, but it's got to go much deeper. Because the Father's here. The Lord Jesus Christ is here. This should change how we think about ourselves, how we walk, how we relate, how we react. It should just change everything at the core. Because of his presence that's here. And the commitment that he's made to the sons. You might say, we are on the Mount of Transfiguration. Right now, we're on the Mount of Transfiguration. And I can't say how long we will be in this place or, you know, but we are on the Mount of Transfiguration. And we're waiting before him. And many prophecies have come about this timeline, the Feast of Tabernacles. And we've not seen it fulfilled. And yet the sons are in the best position God's ever had them for this to be the time to see fulfillment happen. Regardless of what appears or the illusion that may scream at you about your physical body or the things you're going through, the fact remains that we're here positioned at the time that resurrection life is going to break forth upon a people. And it may only be a handful at the beginning. 
We're not, we're not looking for a rapture. We're not sitting back waiting for God to resurrect this body as if everything's on hold. We're pressing in and we're bringing in the kingdom for this is the time of our change. We embrace it, we anticipate it, and we visualize it. I know Paul spoke about living on tiptoe in the book of Philippians that he may attain the out-resurrection from the dead. He had not possessed it, but he saw it. The eyes of his spirit saw the provision, saw the reality, and he lived literally on tiptoe in hopes of attaining it. In the book of Thomas, Thomas says that the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of the Father, is spread out upon the earth, and men see it not. What he was saying is that the provision and reality was present, but the eyes to see it were not. And that has been one of the greatest challenges that those who have been called to sonship during this time have faced, the ability to see. A number of times God has said, resurrection life is here. It's just beneath your skin. It's that close. You say, well, why haven't we manifested it? Is it something that we're still waiting for the Father to do? In part, I would say yes. However, there's a big part of the equation that has to do with how we see reality, how we view the word that God has spoken. Do we still look at everything as a future tense? Or are we being able to make the shift and see it as a truth that is here now, waiting for us to embrace it? So we're talking literally about the full indwelling of Christ, which cannot be separated from resurrection life, and this is what the Feast of Tabernacles is really all about, or the indwelling of the Godhead within the sons. How it's going to happen, we don't know. We know that the cloud of witnesses are waiting, that they without us will not be made perfect, and they're poised at the door waiting for us to kick that door down. I believe that we're beginning to see ourselves in a different light. The interpenetration of God within man is not a future event. It's an event happening right now. It's a takeover of the Father within the hearts of His sons. And the more that takeover happens, the cause and effect will be resurrection life, the renewed body, the renewed mind. Isaiah spoke, Behold, I will do something new. Will you be aware? In Isaiah 52, the prophecy came to come alive. Once again, that's the challenge. The Father is doing something new in the earth, something that has not existed before, yet the world is deeply asleep and in slumber. But the suns are arising, and they are beginning to see. We don't know how it's going to happen. We know it's been unfolding day by day. And we know that there is a quantum step forward that is slated to happen. The sons have been living in a cocoon, a cocoon of the physical body. And now it's time that the cocoon cocoon be shed and the wonder of sonship and the new creation of God in resurrection life becomes manifest. Now this is where we are. This is where we are. We've been here for a while now. 
But it's important that we take the word and make it live, make it real. Take it out of the ethereal, which the scriptures have a tendency to be ethereal and in the future, and take it in real time and realize that we're living this right now and that the access of the Father to us and us to the Father is more open than it's ever been. And the Father is overshadowing the sons right now. You are being overshadowed. The Holy Spirit is brooding, waiting for the sons to be fully birthed. Well, Anne and I send our blessings this evening as we continue on this path of resurrection life.